Our paper is titled Real-Time Virtual Try-On from a Single Example Image Through Deep Inverse Graphic and Learn Differentiable Render. The paper author are Robin Kipps, Roy Chang, Silei Ba, Brendan Dux, Pietro Gori, Mathieu Perrault and Isabel Block from L'Oréal Research and Innovation, Modiface and Telecom Paris. In the context of the digitalization of makeups, virtual try on have, come, have become very popular. Virtual try on is about trying a makeup virtually on some mobile devices or computers. Classically, virtual try on is done using computer graphics, and the requirement is that the system has to be able to synthesize complex makeup material, and this computer graphic system need, often needs manual parameterization and they have to be able to run on real time on mobile devices. In the context of virtual try-on for lipstick rendering, uh, the system can be implemented as follows. We have lipstick parameters and input image of the person who wants to try the lipstick. And there is a system that estimates the mesh of the lips and then uh, this information are sent to the render together with some illumination extracted from the image and the lipstick parameter are rendered in the given context and blended back through the input image. In this context, the lipstick parameters can be the following. You can have the makeup opacity, which is between 0 and 1. You can have the RGB color values between 0 and 255. You can have the amount of gloss on the makeup, and you, have, you can have the gloss roughness, and you can have the reflection intensities. A similar system can be applied for hair coloration. For a given input user and hair parameters, part of the system is used to segment the user's hair, and the hair parameters are applied to a reference hair swatch, and this reference hair swatch is recolored to a targeted hair swatch, and the target hair swatch are blended with the user hair, segmented hair, to give the rendered hair. And then this rendered hair is blended back to the input image. You can see emerging a generic pattern for cosmetic virtual try-on, where given a source image and some cosmetic parameters, here denoted GI, a renderer is used to generate the targeted image. Here in this slide, you have the example of lipstick, eyeshadow, and hair dye. Our paper contributions are the following. We propose a self-supervised framework for learning an inverse graphic encoder for non-differentiable rendering engine. And this framework is applied to the task of example-based virtual try-on, reaching state-of-the-art results in real-time on mobile devices for makeup and hair coloration. Let me present you our method. Our method is based on the deep inverse graphic encoder that, given a reference image, predicts the cosmetic parameters. The cosmetic parameters and a source image are given to the renderer that generates the source image with the relevant makeup. Here it is worth noticing that the renderer is a black box and its inner working needs not to be known to us. How do we train our deep inverse graphics? So it is trained in a self-supervised fashion. So here let's consider uh, the lipstick case. Uh, the, training the training principle are the following. First, we assume that we are given a black box non-differentiable renderer and source image without lipstick. So we can build a training sample by randomly sampling lipstick parameters and using the renderer to apply lipstick parameters to the source image. Then we build the deep invest net graphic networks, here we call encoder, that from source image predict the lipstick parameters. Then the, lipstick, the predictive lipstick parameters uh, can be matched back to the original lipstick parameters that, that was sampled. So the limitation of this training method is that so. The training loss is computed in the graphics parameters space, so which might not capture very well what's happening in the image space. 
Also, because the render is not differentiable, it is not possible to differentiate through the render, thus the sample training samples are used in a static way. To solve the blindness of our system to what's happening in the image space, we introduce an imitator network which emulates our render. The imitator network is trained to, to generate source image with lipstick as would have done our black box render. During training, a VGG perceptual loss is used to compare source image with the lipstick generated by a black box render and source image with lipstick generated by the imitator. An advantage for introducing the imitator is that the imitator is a differentiable render. With our imitator, we can differentiate through the loss. Thus, to train our pipeline, we have two losses. A first term that compares sample graphic parameters with parameters generated by the encoder, and a second term that compares source image with lipstick generated by the black box renderer and source image with lipstick generated by the imitator. Our imitator is trained using a sensitivity loss whose role is to make the imitator as sensitive to the parameter's variation than the original black box render. To train the imitator, a first term compares the render output to the imitator output, and a second term compares the difference of the render output with an output corresponding to the one obtained with a variation of one of the component of the graphic encoder to the, to the difference of the imitator output with an imitator output corresponding to the same variation of one of the comp component of the graphic encoder. The sensitivity loss allow our imitator to better represent the variation effects of all the parameters. The result provided in the result section, section uh, shows that accurately modeling the variation of all parameters is important. The current slide shows the result obtained using our imitator. The result to the left, in the result to the left, you can see that the first column gives, gives the source images. The second column gives the standard imitator without sensitivity loss. The third, third column gives the ground truth images. Here, ground truth is the image obtained with the black box render. The two first row give two examples of lipstick generation, and the two last row give two examples for hair coloration. So what you can notice is that without sensitivity loss, uh, lipstick and hair color are well represented, but illumination is not that well represented. But with the sensitivity loss, you can see that both color and illumination are well represented. This slide gives sample results obtained for lipstick, eyeshadow, and hair coloration. To the left, first row, lipstick is extracted from the reference image using our encoder and applied to the source image using the black box render. So it has to be noticed that the imitator is used only during training. For inference, the black box render is used because it's faster. To the left, second row, you have the result for eyeshadow. To the right, you have two examples for hair coloration. One for the transfer of red hair and one for the transfer of complex blonde black hair mix. This result shows that the proposed method performed well for the considered makeup virtual try-on for cosmetics. This slide shows virtual trial result for various subjects and various lipstick. One pink one, a red one, and a purple one. The first column gives the source images, and the other column gives the other subject. This result shows that our method performed well 
for various lipstick and various subjects. This slide shows lipstick virtual try-on applied to a video sequence. The lipstick parameters are extracted from the reference image to the left and they are applied to the source image uh, extracted from the video. You can see that despite that the fact that uh, the method is applied to video sequence, like the predictions are rather stable. And it works well for people who are also speaking and turning their head to the left or to the right. This slide shows hair coloration in the try on uh, on various subjects. You can see that despite the fact that the hair coloration is, is working less well than the lipstick uh, coloration, it allows also to virtually try uh, hair coloration in a reasonable way. Here you have the result for various subjects and various reference images. We compared our method with state of the art makeup transfer method. We consider uh, the beauty gain and the CA GAN, control level over GAN. And we also consider classical metrics for this type of task. And the result on the table shows that overall considered metrics, our method outperforms state of the art. To gain more insight about the performance of our method with respect to state-of-the-art, we qualitatively compare our method with state-of-the-art on sample results. We can see to the left that for lipstick and eyeshadow, our method better represents illumination and color. However, to the right, we can see that the state-of-the-art method, so Michigan, better represents illumination than our method. So here we can see that our method sometimes misses the illumination. Representation. We also benchmarked the real-time inference capabilities of our method. So we profile our method on Safari browsers and on iPhones. And in our method, as shown in the figure to the right, uh, the encoder is used only once per video. So the table gives the rendering time per frame. So our encoder runs at 27 milliseconds per frame, and the landmark detection runs at 38 milliseconds, and the rounding and display 52, 52, between 52 and 57 milliseconds. This shows that our method can run in real time, uh, leading to real life applications. To conclude my talk, so in this presentation, I present you a deep learning based model combining classical computer graphic renders with neural network prediction render par parameters from input images. So the limitation of the proposed framework are the following. So first, the esti we estimate the makeup battle without making use of any, any, any 3D information, while we can, we can think that the, the the face is a 3d object so using 3d information might help so also we are not taking into account the ambiguity in the reference image where the material reflectance property are combined with the illuminant 
So in the future, we, we plan to work on these limitations. Thank you for listening to my talks. So if you have questions, I'm ready to ask to answer them.